There are days I remember in the height of, you know, after the George Floyd or Breonna Taylor, um, I can name many more, but I won't. Um, thank you, sorry. Um, where I came home feeling sad because of how my husband was treated for the color of his skin. It makes me wonder what our future children, how they'll be treated. And it's hard because it's not something that's gonna go away, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah now talk to me about meeting David Ooh. because we are here for it. Are we talking about my husband, David, or yeah. David Beckham? You met also David Beckham? I met both ah, Davids. Who have you not <laughs> met, Cecilia? You mm. met David Beckham also? Yes, at the same place that I met David. Hello and a warm welcome to the show. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, despite my guest being married to one of our sons <laughs> here in Africa, she is also a dope photographer. And guys, when I say a dope photographer, it's because we will be sharing some of her work here on the show. But today, I thought I would bring her on the show so that she can get to tell us where she was born, where she met David, who you guys, you have been able to watch on our previous episode of inspire global but before i can let her introduce herself allow me to say thank you to our partners here at westwood hotel for giving us this amazing space so that we are able to bring you conversations that have the ability to impact lives and now without further ado please allow me to let my guest today introduce herself hey good Hi. morning uh, thank how you. are you I'm well. I'm You're, so glad to be here today. Yes, looking lovely. Oh, thank we gotta you. say that here <laughs> on the show. Even before I let you introduce yourself, you mentioned something. This is a print skirt. Yes. And this is your African Kitenge. Kitenge. Yes. Yeah, and we'll get to know why this whole combination yeah works for you. But before we do, please introduce yourself. Well, I'd like to say yeah. Kwana Tea to everyone that's watching. Kohana Tea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm learning my kukuyu Good. bit by bit yes. along with my Swahili. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, but my name is Cecilia yeah. Washira. Yeah. I am from Washington, D.C. Well, yeah. currently, but I'm an international based photographer. Yeah. And uh, like you said, I'm married to David Washira here from Kenya. Here from Kenya. Hi, is David? David's good. He's sleeping. He's, you see, exactly. Yeah. He's, 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 sleeping. he's sleeping. Thank you for making time to come on the show. A uh, few things why yeah. I thought I would bring you here on the show. Because, of course, you and David, you make such an amazing couple. Aww. But you also, you are Cecilia. You also do a lot of wonderful works here uh, in photography and also in our community. So mm. before we get to all those, please at least tell us where were you born? How was life like growing? up and how you met this wonderful man wow those are a lot of important questions good yeah yes um i grew up in norway that's yeah. where i was born and raised my dad's norwegian um and then he met my mother in a state called maryland while he was attending yeah. pilot school mm -hmm. he was commercial licensed a commercial yeah. pilot yeah so after they had me um in 1988 now i'm giving away my age <laughs> <laughs> uh, we moved to the United States yeah. and that is where I've been. I also have a younger sister. Her name is Natalie. Yes. We're two years apart. We're very close. Yeah. And uh, so I've been in Maryland for almost half of my life. Mm -hmm. pro we've been there back and forth with between Norway and the U.S. because my mom's American. Yeah. And you know the saying, a happy wife. Happy life. A happy life. Yes. Right. So yeah. my dad caught on to that. <laughs> And w kept my mom close to her family. Yeah. And we stayed in Maryland. I did uh, my high school there. Mm -hmm. Did my undergrad. Yeah. I'm currently doing my master's online there. Yeah. While I'm transitioning here to Kenya. When, oh my, it, uh, the transition is something we'll get to later on. But how was life like for you growing up? Well, I think moving anywhere as a teenager has its own troubles. Mm -hmm. Going into a new school, 
in the United States was hard, I would say. I'm not sure how it is here in Kenya, but you have your cliques, I guess. You have your cheerleaders over here. Yeah. You have your band camp mm -hmm. girls um, and then your athletes. And my sister and I, even though two years apart, we were struggling with trying to find our own identities. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that one thing that my parents taught us really well was to always stay true to yourself and be true and be truthful and kind to others. And friends will find, come anywhere in yeah, life. Yeah. So we made friends. My sister got into sports. I got into art. So yes. we were completely opposite yeah. ends. She did soccer. And in high school in yeah. the United States, mm -hmm. you have to take a fine arts class. So I took darkroom photography. Okay. That's like dating way back where you used a film camera, developed the film in the darkroom, you know, did the developer, yes. did the stop bath, yeah. and then you hung it up. Yes, wash, wash. Wash, wash. Yeah. <laughs> and I was addicted. I mean, that, that might not be the right word in sense, but yeah. I found my passion at such a young age. And I mean, that was when I was like, what, 14, 15? Mm -hmm. And I'm still doing it today. Yeah. And um, I loved it so much that my parents built a dark room in our home in Frederick, Maryland. And for you. For me. And I could spend hours down there with my headsets listening to, you know, what was it back then? He, Celine Dion, Spice Girls, God. Tony Braxton, Britney Spears, Britney Spears yeah, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I was down there for quite a long time. And then I remember my senior year in 2006, I got asked by the social studies teacher if I'd like to go and photograph a wedding with him. Yes. Um, and it's, it's common for teachers to have two jobs because, you know, you're only teaching nine months out of the yeah. year. Yeah. Um, so I photographed my first wedding under him at age 17. And I had never given so much responsibility on, on me you know, because a wedding day is not something you can do over again yes. if something happens. It's one shot. It's one shot. That's all you get. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with the story of love. Wow. So since then, I've been documenting people's love stories. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you, how was that like for you? Like, were you not scared? I'm going to mess it up. Were you not like nervous? How was that like for you? Whew. Yeah, because this is also in an age where Pinterest or Instagram didn't exist. Yes. So you are going to bridal magazines, you know, called the old school way where you're getting inspiration that way. Mm -hmm. um, and the, also the internet where you just Google. Um, but it is scary. Yeah. Because, you know, when you're sharing that first kiss as husband and, as husband and wife, yeah. you want to make sure that your camera settings, you have the right lens on, you're standing in the right place, you're, you know, not, standing somewhere where someone can jump up in front of you and you're going to miss the shot. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's a tremendous amount of pressure. Yeah. But it's also um, so amazing yeah. just mm -hmm. look, being able to ha document that picture and giving that to someone yeah. and knowing that that moment in time of their life you've frozen and captured for them, for them yeah. to relive forever. Yeah. Onwards. So you fell in love with love stories. I fell in love with love stories. Yeah. Okay. How does a girl who fell in love with photography, wedding photos, end up now also uh, taking photos of some of the biggest people in this world? Oh, and I want to say probably around 2014. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I started working at a restaurant in Washington, D.C. It's called Cafe Milano, mm. little Italian uh, place, Georgetown. Uh, a lot of politicians and actresses and athletes come into this restaurant. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't unusual on a Thursday night for someone from one of the presidencies, their, their staff would call and say, hey, um, Michelle and Obama, President Obama want to come and have dinner or their two daughters want to come or athletes. So yes. I, I, I was the host. So I'm the first person you see, yeah. the first person you interact with when you, when you walk into the restaurant. Yeah. And I believe first impressions are always so important. You mm -hmm. only get to do them once, just yeah. like weddings. Yeah. So after interacting with me, and they ask, oh, what else do you do besides, you know, host here? Because I'm, I don't live here and it's quite common for, you know, 
anyone to have two jobs. Yes. I'm not shooting when no one's getting married on a Wednesday every day. or every day, like yes. you said. So yeah. I, mean, I was usually there at night mm -hmm. and that's when, you know, the influential people came in. So that's how I got into photographing um, some of the past, some of our past presidents, um, Michelle Obama, LeBron James, Abby Wambach. And mm. I loved it. Yeah. So I just yeah. got invited to their personal events. Yes their parties yeah and I was a fly on the wall at some of the most prestigious parties and events in DC mm -hmm. what was one of your biggest highlights during that time probably uh, photographing for the Bidens during his uh, while he was vice president under Obama yeah that was probably one of my favorite highlights yeah. yes and you kind of have to go into it like they're everyday people yeah like they don't they know that they're the vice president, they know who they are and the media, but at home, don't you just want to be yourself? Yeah. Right? So I believe that it's important to just treat everyone with respect, with kindness, and um, just hold yourself at a higher standard and show that you're professional, mm -hmm. not get in anyone's face. Yeah. So, and no matter, in whatever photo setting that I'm in, especially for events, I like to, come at it from a photojournalistic perspective and that is be a fly on the wall Good. and um on a personal side mm -hmm. my favorite parts were attending the correspondence dinners oh i loved dressing up in those beautiful ball gowns yes getting your hair done getting your makeup done yeah just having an amazing dinner mm -hmm. with a lot of fun people and then going to the after parties yeah and getting selfies with you know Olivia Pope from, or that's that's her stage name, yeah. but Kerry Washington yeah. or NFL players. So that was that's like more on a personal side, but I loved it. Even when you speak about it, you know, you sparkle and you love you loved it. Who doesn't want to be Cinderella for a night? Yes, right? yeah, yeah. You wanna you wanna show up, you know. You wanna dress up sure. and show up, you know, and still be professional. Still, yeah. well at it. So it's a journey that you have enjoyed. Yeah, because I believe that people want to see you who you are. You know, I'm not just Cecilia behind the camera. I can be Cecilia in front of the camera and they want to know what I'm interested in. They want to yeah. know how I like my tea nowadays yes. or what movies I'm watching on Netflix. Yeah. So I'm a person too. And yeah. that's how you relate with your clients yeah. and get them. Yes. And I know there's also that assumption, but you have in photographed some of the biggest people. This question might seem irrelevant, but did it pay? Some of them paid. Yeah, I think that what you have to do in any industry, especially in the arts and being an entrepreneur, is taking on jobs that may pay nothing or very little, kidogo. Mm -hmm. And then build your portfolio, build your reputation. I mean, I didn't start off by photographing the presidents with Obama or LeBron James. I photographed everyday normal people mm -hmm. and, you know, of all colors and yeah. of all races. Mm -hmm. And by showcasing that, it's going to let people know that you're open to photographing just about anyone as long as your work is good. Mm -hmm. So the more work that you have to your name and that people can attest for that, your reputation, yeah. Yeah. your professionalism, the more high paying you can get. Mm -hmm. I raise my prices annually you know, depending on maybe who I've photographed, mm -hmm. how many publications yeah. I've gotten or awards yeah. that I've received. Yeah. So bit by bit, everyone raises their prices in my industry. Mm -hmm. And in between these shoots, you dressing up, are there any people breaking your hearts or are you breaking other people's Woo! hearts? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, during these shoots, I keep it very professional. Yes. I do. So I'm um, not going to lie. There yeah. are, have been instances where, you know, where I have gotten approached mm -hmm. before I was married, obviously. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've had a very fun and interesting life. Yeah. Um, I met one of my past employers through Catherine Milano. Yeah. I became an executive assistant at one point. Okay. And I got to fly all over the world. Yeah. Went to Egypt, been um, to Anguilla. Mm -hmm. So when I wasn't working and doing stuff for him, I could just go lay on the beach. Yes. And, and go out at night and yeah. enjoy and be, the nightlife. And be happy. And be happy yeah. and, just, and, and just enjoy. Yeah. So, yeah, I've gotten, you know. Yes. 
in between things. In between things. Yes. All right. Uh, talk, talk to me. There's a very special moment I know that you also hold dear uh, because I understand the pop gave you something significant. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could talk to us You've about that. You've done your research. I'll do my research. It goes, I think a lot of my um, clientele, I have to give thanks to Captain Milano. Yeah. He's working there, the owner, Italian, um, close with the Pope. He came to Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. you know, about a decade ago, and he had an event. I was the photographer, and I was handed a rosary by him. Yeah. And I remember when I started dating David, it was just hanging on a bookshelf. And David came up and looked at it, and he's like, oh, this is a very, like, pretty, like, rosary. Like, wow. why is it just yes. hanging on a bookshelf? Yeah. So I gave him the whole background story. And he was like, oh my gosh, like this should be in a shrine. Yeah. Like it needs to be like put in something. A not gift just... from the Pope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I take it as a gift like you would give me. Yes. I would cherish it because yeah. we've become friends. Mm -hmm. So. Are you friends with the Pope? No. I'm not okay. With the Pope. <laughs> yeah. No, I no. think that that would be a far fetch to say. I know there yeah. are a lot of other people, but he's done work for so many people mm -hmm. and captured that. So. Yeah. Um, I think people can also see in my life that I keep things very low key yes. and I'm a very private person. And yeah. I can also say that about David and our families. Yeah. We're not one to boast yeah. on our work. Yeah. We like to give back to the community and yeah. not necessarily use our platform for, I would like it to call it bragging rights. Yeah. You know, so I do believe that there are some times you can sprinkle in who you've photographed or who you've been in the room with to yeah. help, whether it's with your community service and your outreach mm -hmm. or with being, you know, professional with, you know, gaining more clients. Yeah. But there's a time and a place for, for everything. that. For, the, for everything, like exactly. you said. Yeah. yeah. Now talk to me about meeting David Ooh. because we are here for it. Are we talking about my husband, David, or yeah. David Beckham? You met also David Beckham? I met both ah. Davids. <laughs> <laughs> met Cecilia. You oh. met David Beckham also? Yes, at the same place that I met David. Oh, now mm. talk to us about meeting <laughs> David Washira. Um, we met yeah. in March of 2018 uh, at, a, at a at a Y2Y World Bank event that yeah. he was co-chairing with some of his um, friends and colleagues. I was actually at a dinner across the street yeah. and there, I heard there was an event. So I went over and I walked in. I remember what he was wearing. I remember what I was wearing, obviously. Yeah. And our eyes just locked. And it's hard to meet someone at a place like at an event because the music's very loud and you can hardly have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So I want to say that the entire thing from walking in the door to leaving was maybe 15, 20 minutes. So um, he loves these colorful bracelets yes. and I complimented him on them. And looking back at it now, he told me, he's like, yeah, I thought you were polite. You were obviously beautiful, yes. but polite. Yeah. I didn't think anything was going to come out of it. Uh -huh. um, but when I complimented on him, I told him, can you bring me one when you come home? Yeah. And needless to say, he did. And he brought me this and because he was leaving for Zimbabwe for yeah. 10 days. Yeah. And we were like high schoolers mm -hmm. well during those 10 days yes we could not stop chatting okay um and so i love telling everyone that yeah. i fell in love with david's heart and who he is as a person on the inside before anything like even before hand holding like, you know, when you're young and you're dating and, you, and you're and you like, oh, touching a person's hand, yes. you may feel a spark yes. or a hug or a snuggle. Yeah. But no, like I fell in love with who he was from the inside and yeah. then outward. Let's talk about the 10 days. What are you guys chatting Ooh, about? What are we chatting about? Yeah. Well, the text started because I told him, hey, will you let me know when you land? Because mm -hmm. like I said, my dad was is yes. now a retired commercial airline pilot. Yeah. So yeah. growing up with a dad who's on an airplane, you want to know landed I'm taking off and we still do that to this day with, yeah. with the family so mm -hmm. he just sent me a text and he promised like I've landed I've arrived and from there 
you know, like, oh, how is it? Because I'd never been to this part or to Zimbabwe or yeah. to Kenya prior to meeting him. Yes. So I, we just started talking about Kenya. We were sending pictures back and forth. Um, the end of March when we met in DC, that's Cherry Blossom Festival. Yeah. So I was waking up like I did today, very early, 5.30, going out photographing couples with the cherry blossom trees. And mm -hmm. so I was sending him pictures of that. We also talked about how important family is to us. Uh, we found out that we go to the same church. Our church has multiple levels. Wow. So he sits on one level and I sat on the other level. Yes. So we never ran into each other. Yeah. But such a small coincidence, you know, almost serendipitous that we have all these things in common. Yeah. And we've never crossed paths with each other before. Mm -hmm. Even he went to a football game, soccer game that I was photographing on the field. Manchester United was playing, which is his yes. favorite. Yeah. And he was up in the stands. Yeah. So we've crossed paths in life before, but before. we've never met. You never locked eyes. We never locked eyes. So yeah. I think we talked about the normal things that you talk about when yeah. you first started dating. Mm. Um, do you want kids? Um, how close are you with your family? Do you have any siblings? You know, what have you done in your life? So those type of things. Yes. And then he actually came home a day early. He gave up a meeting with the president to come home and cook me dinner. Hey. Hey, I know. Hey. I know. Yes. He came home and then yeah. I went over to his house. He made me a really nice dinner. My first real like African Kenyan meal, you know, the beef stew, the ugali, the mokimo. He made you ugali and mokimo for dinner. Your yeah. first date. My first date. Uh, this is ours. Yes. <laughs> now, yeah. I may not say he cooks that much, but, yes. but he did the first time. Yeah. Um, and then I went home and we met at the airport the next day mm -hmm. and we flew to Texas for one of his nonprofit events, the Youth Engagement Society. They threw on a gala, yeah. a masquerade. We all wore masks. So yeah. he asked me to photograph it. And little did I know I was meeting his two sisters, his mom and his dad, but not at his girlfriend. Yes. I was just the photographer. I was just someone that he had just met. Yeah. We like to take, we took things very slow. Mm. So I met the family really early on. Yeah. And he got to see what I love, my photography, at a very early stage. Yeah. And the rest, I would say, it's history. It's history. Were you not getting curious about his turban? Did you ask him? Or were you a bit reserved about um, it? David did a really good job at explaining his culture mm. and where he's from. Like I said, he's very committed to his family. Yeah. So he made sure that I knew that he belonged to the Ocarino Church. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, that we live in a very um, mixed media where anything that you see is on social media. Yeah. Heck, my wedding was on social media within like an hour it happened. Yes. So I didn't want to go and Google David Washira. I didn't want to know something about him that he didn't tell me because I think that that could give false representation because mm. you can't believe everything that you read in the news. Yes. So I asked little by little, but he told me that he told me about the church and yeah. that's all I needed to know. Yeah. And beyond that, I just saw David. Yes. It didn't make or break yeah. me being interested yeah. and then loving him for who he is. Yes. He's not going to ask me to change how I dress or the color of my hair or my culture. Yeah. So I'm not going to ask him to change who he is. Who he is. I love that. Thank Talk you. to me about the first date and the moment you realized this man is for me. I don't know if I can pinpoint just one time one time that I felt like okay, this is I'm in love yeah. or I'm going to marry this guy. I mean, of course you speak about those things when you're dating yes. because you're you know, God always tells you to speak things into existence. Mm -hmm. So I think that one important one was when he took me to Kenya for the first time in July, August of 2018. Now, keep in mind, we were only dating for about four months. Yeah. And he brought me across the world. Yes. A place I'd never been. Wow. To meet new people. Wow. And I just saw how giving he was to his community and how loving he is with children and mm. family oriented. Mm -hmm. And I think just watching from behind the scenes, even when not his girlfriend, even though I was, but yeah. not to the public, not yeah. yet. Yeah. From that view, it's so beautiful. And I think that I've been able to inherit that yes. through storytelling yeah. with my photography, watching people get married, watching yeah. 
a proposal or being having a baby brought into the world mm -hmm. and documenting that. Yeah. Just seeing how how loving and caring David is yes. for his Kenyan community and what he wants to do to mm -hmm. change the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, he went into development for a reason. He works at the bank for a reason. Yes. He wants the world to be a better place. Yeah. And those acts of service, I said, sign me up. Sign me, I'm in. I'm in. For the long run. I'm for the long run. Yeah. He told me really early on, he's like, if you date me, I need you to know that at, at my end game is to come back to Kenya. I mean, that doesn't mean we can't go back and forth like we're doing now, but mm -hmm. his end game is to come back to Kenya and give back to his community. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's, that's wonderful. That was okay with you. I, I commended him for it. And yeah, I said, yes, let's do this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you, you just fell in love with his personality. Yeah. According to him, what did he like about you? One of the first compliments David ever told me yes. <laughs> was he liked how inquisitive I am. Good. I ask a lot of questions. Yes. Um, he loves that I'm also deep into my faith. Um, without that and family, yeah, I think that that you won't have a solid foundation mm -hmm. for who you are as an individual, yeah. and then who you are as when you become into a relationship and yes. you bring that into a marriage. Yeah. So our foundations <clears throat> were very much aligned. Uh -huh. So and I, lo I love to cook and bake. Yeah. So like I said. That first meal that David made, that's probably like one of 10 that he's ever made out of the, like the four years that we've been together. Yeah. So he loves that I cook and love it. Yes. Um, I just made brownies last night for him. He came yeah. home and he was like, wow. Um, and that I love family. You love family. Yeah. He yeah. sees how close I am with mine. And then when I saw how close he is with his, he wanted to make sure that he brought someone in to his family mm. that was not only accepting, mm -hmm. but um, one that could make the family even more stronger together. More stronger. And that's one thing that I can say that his dad, his mom, his two sisters mm. commend me for. Yeah. What was your family saying about him? Uh, my family loved David. Mm. Um, we've always, my sister and I, I don't think that my parents have ever not liked a guy that we've dated. Yeah. Liked is an okay word, mm -hmm. but they loved David. They did. They did. Yes. David was res very respectable. He respected my parents so much and you know, I can't, I can't thank his parents enough for raising him that way and for, for the faith, you know, yes. that they have mm. for using that in his upbringing. Um, they loved how David took care of me. I think mm -hmm. every parent wants to see and hear that their daughter is safe and Good. loved and taken care of. Yeah. And his parents and siblings reception towards you. How was that like? They welcomed me with open arms. Oh, kujapa. Like, yeah. Come here. They're like, I am not yes. Solomon. I am dad. You know, and Tabitha became mom and the sisters are now my sisters. Yeah. And I, I can't see it any other way. Yeah. And that was something different, you know, cultural wise, because, you know, dating in the U.S. or dating in the Western world, I, I always called them Mr. and Mrs., whatever their last name was. Yeah. Or their first name, if it became, you know, if they if they corrected me and told me, oh, call me, you know, Samantha, yes. call me Jason. Yeah. But no, David's parents were, were just like, I'm mom, I'm dad. And I learned that through, you know, like, in coming here and you're like you become mama wegwa yeah. yes. mama to the first the yeah. eldest yes. you know so yeah. mama david and now you know i've grown so close with them yeah and i tell my mom everything yeah both my moms yes yeah wow and you guys you've been together now for four years four years how was the proposal like wow um, how did this guy propose so david kept me thinking that it was not going to happen for a while. I, we loved our relationship. We were in no rush for anything. I remember he was on mission in Zimbabwe. He flew home on July 2nd, landed in DC July 3rd, was home for two hours in DC, and then caught a flight to come see me in Florida where my mom and my dad live. And he asked my dad for permission to marry me on July 4th. And now my dad's in construction. Yes. He owns a, uh, a home remodeling. Yeah. So my dad had taken David 
out that afternoon and they were on a work site. And David, he's telling me now, he's like, I was so nervous. Like, how can you ask your, your dad to marry you when yeah. he has a hammer in his hand? Like, what if he says no? What if he gets mad? So he asked my dad, <coughs> my dad said, yes, open arms, Aww. loved it. Aww. And then he came home and he looked at me and he's like, so when are you getting married? And he blew the cap. So I automatically knew that he had asked and that was July. Fast yeah. forward a couple of months. Yes. We're in November. We're going to a friend's house. I just made a homemade apple pie. It's like, and we're going to our friend's house who lives up the street yeah. and I'm just in my normal everyday clothes, yeah. you know, relaxed. Like I'm going to, I'm not dressing up to go mm -hmm. to your house, right? Yeah. You know me, I'm yeah. coming relaxed. Chilled. Chilled, Yeah, right? you know. It's dinner and, you know, dessert. Yeah. So we're all sitting there with his closest friends, his YP friends that he got into the bank with. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember Ahim coming in, you know, from East Asia and some other people flying in from different parts of the world that they work in and they haven't been together in a long time. So we're exchanging gifts, magnets that we collected from past trips and yeah. we're giving them to the women. Yeah. And I'd known about them because I had to find them. So we're giving them them. And then all of a sudden, um, David puts a little blue box on the table. And here I am thinking that, oh, it's just, it's another bracelet with beads, some earrings, a necklace, you know, because I wasn't thinking yeah. that he's going to propose now. Yeah, especially like, that. Especially that, yeah. right? But um, so I'm pulling the, re the white ribbon off of it. Yeah. And David's best friend, Fred, is sitting across from us and he starts videotaping it. And I open up to this. I mean... It's beautiful. something. And I started crying right away. Oh. And David being the non-traditional man that he is, and I love him for that. Yeah. He doesn't get down on one knee. Yeah. He just sits there and he looks at me oh. and he says, we've been on, you know, quite a number of ventures this year. Yeah. Would you uh, do me the honor of accompanying me on, you know, some more and marrying me? Oh. And I said, yes. And I wrapped my arms around him. Oh, and I cry and yeah. then I FaceTime my mom and all my friends and everyone just so happy for us. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to tear up. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. But everyone was so happy and loving. And then the month later we had our engagement party yeah. and our families came in yes. and we were able to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic happened. Yeah. So we kind of had to put a little pause on wedding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we, we enjoyed the time that we had together. Yeah. We were able to wedding plan, which right. I know every couple learns a lot from each other. Yeah. But it was enjoyable. I loved every part of it. You loved it. And he was, he was, he was involved. You know, he created our own wedding invitations. Wow. We wrote them in Norwegian, the language that I speak in Norway. Yeah. yeah. And then on one side, we had them in Kukuyu. Kukuyu, yeah. Because that was his mother tongue, yes. not Swahili. Kukuyu. Yeah. Kukuyu. And then English in the middle yeah. with our flags that represented the countries. Yes. And that's how we sent out our wedding invitations. Wow. So we, we've always stayed so true to our faith and our cultures and our, our friends and our family that and we wanted what that. Believe in. And what we believe in. So we wanted to showcase that in our wedding. Yeah. And then you guys got married during COVID. Yeah. We got married on June 12th, yeah. 2020, which is the anniversary of Loving Day. Yes where interracial, where it became legal for interracial couples to get married in yeah. the United States. Oh. So our wedding has more meaning to, uh, to uh, not only us, but the world to help, you know, symbolize how special and meaningful that day is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've been this love, you know, this lady that loves photographing lovers. <laughs> who, who, who photographed you during your wedding? Wow, that our search for the perfect wedding photographer was put yeah. on me. I got to choose at the end of the day. I chose a gentleman by the name of James Willis. Mm -hmm. He did a phenomenal job. Yeah. I loved yes. all of it. Yeah. He and his two other photographers, his team. Let's just say that when the sisters get married, we already have the photographer. Yeah. He's there to stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was the whole family available from he, your side and his side? Unfortunately, due to COVID and the 10% restrictions, our wedding consisted of less than 40 people. We had my mom and my dad and my sister. Yes. We had a couple of my family members yeah. who already lived in Texas mm -hmm. and um, church members and his side of the family. And that was it. Yeah. 
very small. I can remember and give you all the names of everyone that was at my wedding. Yeah, and you walking down the and aisle. And walking the aisle with my dad. So yes. we went from having a 400 big church wedding to, to, 40. to 40. Yeah. But I wouldn't change it for the day. Yeah. It was perfect. That moment right there, knowing this is the man I want to spend the rest of my life with. How was that like for you? It was the most beautiful journey I've ever been on. Learning about the different cultures, how he and I plan to take our different, not just our personalities, our beliefs, our family values, and try to blend them in and make yeah. them ours yeah. for the for for our future together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and for others to see. Yeah. Because it's not just one or the other. Yeah. We're, we're from two different. So um, it's a beautiful journey and it sure it had some challenges like any normal couple. Mm -hmm. um, and then you add in the, the cultural differences or me coming to Kenya or him, you know, there wasn't much for him to change or learn yes. about yeah. going to Norway, but there were a lot of things that I had to learn about here in Kenya mm -hmm. that I didn't already, that I, that I didn't know from yeah. either lack of experience of being here mm -hmm. or just not knowing or have yes. dated an yeah. African before. Yeah. Wow. And do people ask you, Cecily and David, when are you guys having kids? <laughs> the million dollar question. It is. Yeah, we plan to someday. Yeah. I think that uh, having a family besides David and I is important. Right now, we're just focusing on us. Mm -hmm. um, but, and with us, meaning what we can give back to the community. With our two nonprofit organizations, we want to help educate kids here. We want to give as much as we can um, to the community. Yeah. And then with that, when our time is right, mm. Why is we'll it? definitely bless yeah. the family. The family. The family we, with, yeah. with a baby. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So you're just taking your time. We're enjoying married life exactly. and traveling. Yes. Why is it important for people to enjoy marriage life first before even kids come into the picture? I think that if you jump, too fast into having kids before you've settled into your marriage, mm -hmm. you may lose track of who you are as yeah. husband and wife. You lose the opportunity to just be the two of you mm -hmm. because once you have kids, you can't just jet set. Yes. You're not just David and Cecilia, your mom and dad and your taking care of another human mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. and that's a huge responsibility yes and i want to i want david to know everything that he can yeah about me yeah and he learns something new every day mm. and i learn about david and there are so many children not just here in kenya but in the united states norway you know all over the world that need things right now yeah. and since we're in a position to give we want to give to those before we give to yeah. our own. Yeah, why is it important for you to give back? Um, I think that bef even before I met David, my parents always taught me the importance of community service, um, giving back to your community. So I can recall during Christmas time, very, you know, giving time of the year. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're exchanging gifts. You yeah. know, Jesus was born, the wise men came with gifts. So I believe that during that time, my yeah. parents gave us twenty dollars each, and we were we we could spend it however we wanted to. My sister and I chose to go and spend it and make a Christmas for another child. Aww. So, however far the, that twenty dollars went, yeah. which is equivalent to two k Kenya shillings, yeah, we bought the gifts, we wrapped them, and then we delivered them to either a homeless shelter yeah. or a family in need, um, and so. I've taken those experiences and brought them along into my journey with David. Mm. Um, and now with the organizations that we work with, um, I try to give back, you know, in multiple ways, mm. whether that's, you know, giving at church when we go every Sunday, yeah. um, donating my time, teaching someone photography. Yes. Or, you know, we have an event up next week on Monday where yeah. I've joined with a shoe company or shoe organization, I should say, yeah. called um, Because International. They are giving us a hundred pairs of shoes, sandals, wow. that we're going to Dandora yeah. school yeah. and donating yeah. to children 
who live in informal settlements. So they can have something on their, on their feet to protect yeah. themselves. And what's so amazing about these shoes is that it's not a one size fits all. These shoes expand three sizes. So when I give you these shoes, they're not gonna outgrow you. Like in many kids, they grow up fast, yeah. you know? Yeah. I can't remember the last time I bought new shoes. Yeah. So they're gonna be able to live with these shoes for a long time and mm -hmm. then, you know, give them to another student. Yes. So that's just one. And then, you know, with our, with the Youth Engagement Society, yeah. having SMEs, being able to help them. And so David and I contribute countless ways. Exactly. And there's a very popular story to your relationship, especially where people get to mistake David for your driver or yeah. people get to mistake, you know, him for so many things and not even, you know, believe that you guys, you are married, husband and wife. What are those events and how does that make you feel? It's frustrating. For sure, mm -hmm. can't lie about that. Um, but I don't think that I can point fingers and say, it only happens in Kenya. It may happen more here, but it also happens in the United States. Yeah. We live in this era where, you know, everything around us is Black Lives Matter. And being in an interracial marriage, anywhere you live has its ups difficult and ups, ups and downs, its difficulties. Mm. Here in Kenya, I can sit here and say that when we're driving together um, and I get dropped off because David's a gentleman, he doesn't want me to walk, you know, from where we parked the car all the way up the hill, you know, wherever it is that we're going. And the guardsmen always tell him without fail, you can drop her off here and you can go park over there. And we've just learned to bite our tongues because it's just the lack of knowledge, it's ignorance. And what the only thing that we can do as, as, as humans is to educate mm -hmm. and um, what, what, how that looks like, it's different. Um, in the United States, what I've learned a lot being in a relationship and being married to a black African is understanding all the misconceptions that are out there. And I've learned that along with understanding what it means to have privilege. And that was a tough pill to swallow a couple years ago, or like a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. especially after the death of George Floyd yes. and having two sisters, amazing, smart, you know, educated sisters from Africa and learning how come I've been able to have this privilege? How come they haven't? And when we go shopping in certain areas, I've been able to walk in wherever I want without judgment, without you know anyone looking at me differently. When they walk in or when my husband walks into a gas station or a grocery store, they may look at him differently. And I hate that. There's nothing more, like I don't want them to judge someone based on the color of their skin or a turban or the clothes that I'm wearing. But we live in a world where that does happen. And I really hope that with our marriage, what we stand for, what we symbolize, what we want to give back to the community, people can look at us and say, wow, they are trying to change and educate yeah. and use their marriage as more than just a love story. Mm. It's for people to understand, okay, you, you can marry outside of faith. You can marry outside of culture. Yes and learn to love each other mm -hmm. no matter what. Yeah. And you just have to know that people don't always, aren't always going to be accepting yeah. or know that he's my husband and not my driver or know that I am his wife or look at interracial marriage as okay. Yeah. You just have to, you just, you, yes. you just have to, Accept that. Accept that. We get those comments on our social media pages all the time. Mm -hmm. Why am I not wearing a turban? Yeah. Why am I married to him? Why is he married to me? And it hurts. But there's nothing you can do besides pray for them. Yeah. Or teach them and help that they sometimes open their eyes and see that there's okay. nothing wrong. How do you deal with it, the both of you? We pray. I think that. Prayer helps and 
we talk a lot about it. We talked a lot about um, the Black Lives Matter movement. We talked a lot about how he felt. We talked about how I felt, what I can do differently, what he could do differently, what we can do differently, because we're not glued at the side yes. all the time yes. when we go out. So we are, we're individuals first and a team, you know, second. second. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously when we came ma married, yeah. we became united. Yeah. But we have to learn how to handle those situations yeah. outside of our marriage. So there are days I remember in the height of, you know, after the George Floyd or Breonna Taylor, um, I can name many more, but I won't. Um, thank you, sorry. Okay. Um, where I came home feeling sad. because of how my husband was treated for the color of his skin. It makes me wonder what our future children, how they'll be treated. And it's hard because it's not something that's gonna go away, right? Yeah. It's something that, it's okay. that you just have to, and I, I, I don't wanna accept because change can happen mm. and we just pray for change. Mm. We want change. Mm. And mm. I think that's what David and I really strive for. And yeah. what we do is improving, you know, start with your community and then have the ripple effect and have it go outwards. Mm. Do you think many people have a problem accepting white privilege is a thing? I don't. I mean, it's definitely out there. I'm not going to... I think that the only thing that you can do is educate yourself yeah. about it. And just like you can educate yourself about being in an interracial marriage. Yes. Educate yeah. yourself about the Ocarino Church. Yeah. There's, there's endless amount of knowledge out there on any topic. And I think that the more knowledge you have, the smarter and better position you can place yourself in in today's world. God. A lot of interracial marriages fall apart because people pave way for the things that come in between. Every couple that is struggling, especially in the interracial setup, what would you like to tell them? I would like to tell them to just keep their faith and have hope. Yeah. David and I are here. We make it a firm point that um, when you write us a message on our social media, on our LinkedIn, we always respond. Mm -hmm. We always respond. Mm -hmm. I just opened up my Instagram not too long ago, and there's a Kenyan living in Norway. And she's asking me how I'm holding up in Kenya because of the reverses. She's like, how are you dealing with the culture? How are you dealing, you know, with the food? And she's married to a Norwegian. Yeah. So um, it's interesting how the roles can be reversed. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone struggles with their own, yeah. in their own path. Yeah. I just, there's nothing wrong with who you married or and who you are. Love. And love is love. Love is love. I was, shouldn't even have to explain no. to people. I remember when David and I were on Jeff Kenyonge yeah. in February of last year, and yeah. he was asking David how his people would feel or think about him marrying a Mzungu, a Norwegian. And David, you know, our God does not tell us who to marry. Black or white, purple, American, Norwegian, Kenyan, yeah. or whatever, you know, tribe you're yeah. from. Love is love and yes. you can't change that. Change that. I wouldn't want to. Yeah. I wouldn't want someone to love me just based off of color of my skin mm. I, that's not love yeah do you ever feel the pressure to change who you are so that you can you know incorporate your life to that of the <laughs> Akorino society and do you ever get mixed feelings do people give you these mixed reactions like you talked about why is she not in a turban I love your skirt no. it's a represent <laughs> a beautiful representation of their culture how do you blend all these things together um, I think that it's 
first important for you to just stay true to who you are as your identity. Okay. Now, sure, when you're dating and when yeah. you're married to someone, you can get mixed and you want to incorporate the other person's, whether it may be style and their culture. Mm. I love my Katenge. It's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been stopped in airports <laughs> when I wear any type of my African Katenge. Yeah. Because I think it's, they think it's so unique. You yes. don't see that every day. Yeah. Um, so we have, I've, en I've enjoyed incorporating it. Mm -hmm. um, do I do it every day? No. I do it when, it when it's best for Cecilia. I'm not going to do it to appease you, my husband, or the community. Or the community. I, I don't want to put on a fake, yes. fakeness because yeah. if we're, if, when we transition to Kenya full time and with the acts of service that we're doing in our community, yeah. I don't want to walk in. Let's just take Dandora, for example. Yeah. I don't want them, the kids or the teachers to look at me and think of me as something that I'm not. Why? Yeah. That's not genuine. It's not. It's That's not. fake. It's fake. Yeah. And I don't want it to come across as a yes. bribe. Yeah. I want them to see that it's coming from my heart. Good. From me. So whether I'm in jeans or a pleated skirt. Yeah. I am me through and through. Yes. And when you see me in my tangy dresses, know that I am loving it. I'm rocking it and, and feeling good and about feeling it good and, and feeling I'm good about as it as authentic yes. as I can possibly be. Yeah. I'm not, you're not faking it. I'm not faking it. Yeah. I want to wind up, but before I do, is there anything that you think we should have touched on? I think just like you asked me a lot about going into my marriage with yeah. David, being from the Western part of the world and accepting others. I think that love is love. And you should not turn down a person based on where they're from, what they look like. It's like a book. Open the first page, read it. Go to the Keep next. Keep going. Keep going. Read yeah. the journey, yeah. read the person, and allow yourself to be vulnerable and fall in love. Because if I wouldn't have done that to David, if I would have judged him like most people do in this world you would have missed out on a good thing i wouldn't be sitting next to you right now yeah i would not be here and yeah. all i can do is thank god for allowing my heart to see david good i love that I love that. Thank you, Cecilia, for even taking your time to share your story with us, being vulnerable with us. We appreciate that. What legacy are you looking into leaving behind and where can our audience find you? I think that what David and I are doing yeah. with our acts of service, our community outreach is what we want to do with our lives. We are here for our community. And that's not just the Kenyan community. That's for people back home in Washington, D.C., where we live. Those are for my childhood friends in Norway, where I grew up, my teachers, our pastors. We want them to know that we're here. And if there's something that we can do to enrich a person's life, whether it be education, providing shoes or clothes or food, we're here to help. Yeah. And we want to so bad. Yeah. If we're able to, we will. Um, and with that being said, if there is someone out there that needs something, David and I are both on Instagram. Yeah. We're on Facebook. We're on LinkedIn. My personal handle is at CC Olausen. Yeah. Paying, paying tribute and being authentic. You know, I took David's last name. Yes. I became a Washira. Yeah. <laughs> but I kept my maiden name Olausen. Yes. Which um, is Norwegian. Mm. And I kept that as part of my business. Mm. That way I can still keep my Norwegian American roots, yeah. heritage, yeah. and still celebrate the African part in me. Mm. Thank you so much. Yeah. We'll talk to someone who is broken as we wind up. I want you to know that I'm here. If I'm not here, David's here. And we want to hear your story. We want to help. We want to support. And if there's anything, please reach out to us on Instagram, 
any social media platform and we will try our very best to answer and see if there's a way that we can help you. Yeah. God bless. God bless. May God, God bless. bless you too. May, may, may good things come your way. We are sending blessings and blessings upon you and David. Thank you even for taking your time and sharing your story uh, with us. I know we will be together again somewhere on the 31st. Yes. In that initiative where you will be donating the shoes to the um, to some of the people the in students. our community, the students yeah. that are deserving. So thank you so much. And also I always like to say on the show, if there is a way you think that we can partner up to have this impactful community that we are trying to build here always feel free i think right now you are a partner you are a friend of the show so yes. if there's a way you would want us to help your initiative please feel free to reach out to us right yes david All and right. i would enjoy that very much thank you and thank to you. you guys who are watching right at home or wherever you are you know maybe flying out you know in the gym i know people watch these stories from anywhere i would want you to tell me what's your take home from today's conversation i think for me it's love is love and we shouldn't even have to answer or even give an explanation to people on why we are dating the people that we are dating because at the end of the day love is love i want to know what your take home is on today's uh, conversation and if you would also want to share your story with us my email is right there on the screen if you want to get hold of cecilia or david <laughs> their social media handles also are right here on the screen to the amazing team that is behind this great job, the legendary director and camera person, Edwin Ochieng. Thank you so much, Ed, for everything that you do here on the show. And our amazing editor, David Moredi, for compiling this episode and making sure it reaches you right on time. To our partners here at Westwood Hotel, thank you so much. Guys, you can check them out. They have nice conference rooms. You can even throw your wedding here at the garden, baby showers, anything that you would want to do uh, their contact details will also be here on the screen my name is lynn gogi hope you enjoyed today's episode till next time bye bye